if you ask someone, tell me about the problems in the community, maybe they will tell you the typical things that you want to hear. But when you ask someone to take a photo, they don't know what that's gonna, where that's going to take them. And when they see it and when they look at the photo and they think about why they took it, that's when they realize why they took it. So the visual is really, is really suggestive in a very different way than, than we're used to. And I think that's why it works so well. My name is Silvia Cunto Amesti. I am a, a physician. Um, I actually work with uh, young men, young males in sexual reproductive health. But the other part of my work is, is research and is qualitative research. I'm very involved with the community. Also, I use this methodology that I have been using for a number of years uh, called PhotoVoice. I was trained in photo voice in 2015. It was a, a very um, in-depth training uh, to be able to use the methodology. And this is a methodology that I really wanted to learn because I, um, I like the fact that you are just there guiding the process, but the entire research is done by actual participants. The participants are the ones who are leading uh, the themes, are leading the the issues that they see as they see them, and they actually give themselves answers and, and, and we use that for advocacy. I'm Alani Estrella. I am a fourth year medical student. And really what brought me here, I was, I was interpreting at the time at a clinic. And a lot of the time what I saw was kind of this disconnect of kind of what patients understood and needed, especially those that were speaking Spanish, um, from kind of like this understanding of of, of these diseases that the doctors were treating. And I really wanted to combine everything into, into the work that I was doing. I was really interested in, in decreasing suffering for a lot of people that was unnecessary. And I kind of discovered this method, photo voice, and I started poking around. And I, I found Dr. MSD after, after some time. And I told her, you know, I, I haven't been able to find anyone that's been doing this. And she was like, oh, I'm doing that. When we had the pandemic, uh, we, we, Eleni and I were thinking about what photo voice project can we do that really highlights the impact of the pandemic. And then we, we came up with a couple of projects, but then one of the projects was working with the medical students. The medical students are always a community, but it became much more of a community because they were the only ones going through it in, in, the, in the medical school in general, because the second years were still having contact with the patients. First year medical school is, is super important in, in one way that where that's where you meet all your classmates and you get together and you study together and, and you have events together. There's like things that they do together that uh, they weren't able to do. So in that sense, it became a community that who, they didn't know each other. They didn't know each other like they should have known each other when you were in first year medical school. So that became a community, that became a real community affected by COVID. For the students that are coming with all these desires to help others and to be, you know, doctors because they want to help other people and they have all these ideals about how they can do that, it was like a, a real shock and some, for some was really even regressive. And, and we thought it was worthwhile to listen to them because I think they were going through it in their own way, and we knew they were going to be okay. But it it was uh, it was a moment to capture. We felt, and and that's why we decided to do it. Some of the most important points in my first year of medical school were when I met my first cadaver, right? And I was with other medical students, and we were connecting over this this human that donated their body to us so that we could learn. And my first patient, um, who. You know, I didn't know how to interview, but they were still willing to share their story with me. And going through these pieces and growing with other people and being able to talk about it was really important in, in professional identity development and kind of how I see myself practicing with patients in the future. And all of a sudden that's gone, right? It's like people are online and you're not physically in the same space as someone. You're not necessarily connecting with someone in the same way. So it was this really unique opportunity to say, huh, this is a different time 
for these people, you know, this group of people. And, you know, that, that exact question of what does community look like to them? Like, how are they relating to one another right now and, and what do they need? During the project, we ask them to take photos of a prompt. We give them a prompt and then they take photos of that prompt. They bring the photos the next day and we discuss. So it's like different waves, like five different waves of prompts. Mm -hmm. And this is the result of all of that. I took this photo about a year ago when I was in the depths of quarantining with my family. This is my sister, who I would take photos of throughout the pandemic. This photo has stuck with me because while so many parts of living through COVID have differed, this photo reminds me of not just the early months of the pandemic, but also how I'm currently living. The water is so delicately serene, and in some ways, I do feel this sense of peace and connection to my family and the people around me. But the water also produces an eerie anxiety because as it creeps up to the lips and the eyes, you're reminded of how close to drowning you are. You can feel the pressure of the water against your chest. Is it comforting or is it a somatic representation of anxiety? In this photo, I feel both, uneasy and calm. I've felt both emotions throughout the past year. The anxiety has been greater sometimes and other times the stillness and peace have been more prominent. This photo brings together those two dichotomies that have become so intertwined and textured that at times it's hard to even tell them apart. Is it the cool creep of water welcomed or feared? I absolutely think the visuals are, are, are really um, kind of unblocking, you know, and, and allowing people to express themselves. Even for those that thought uh, they don't know how to take a photo. They never have done that. We train them to, to really learn to look at photos and describe them and, and to take photos that make sense. But in, when in reality, they are the ones who, t who take all those photos and they are the ones who, who really do all the work. So in that process, we learn so much from the community and from what they're sharing with us that is like really from, from the heart. And then when, when you are the audience and you look at those photos and you look at the quotes, it also has an impact on you that is completely different from uh, just looking at the quote, for example, without the photo. I mean, that visual gets somewhere else in your brain and it really makes it, uh, highlights it. Taking a photo slows someone down in, in that you have to look at it and you have to really try to figure out what it means. And when someone's explaining why they took a photo, they become the expert. And I think it's really important for someone, even if they don't have all of the tools in making a photo look really nice or, or have the correct lighting or to be able to like really put someone in, in, the, in like a, an ideal place in a frame, being able to explain, I took this photo because I think it's important and here's why, equals that playing field, whether it's between researcher and patient or doctor and patient as they are more of a participant in that relationship. The biggest impact is that people feel empowered when they do these projects. Mm -hmm. The community feels empowered. It's important to take some respect into this process, right? We're not aiming to paint a picture in a, or a community in a negative light. We're not interested in, in you know, trying to tell our own story. And so often, in, at least in the couple projects that I've worked on, I've been really surprised to find, you know, themes of hope and resiliency in really dark times. And it was very contrary to a lot of the reading that was that I had at the time with mm -hmm. news organizations, with other types of research. And don't get me wrong that these, you know, patient communities were affected pretty severely. Um, but often, even among all the negativity, they would talk about what they were doing together and how important it was that they had these resources, that they had each other to depend on and that they had this moment of slowness to appreciate that. And so there are moments of beauty in these, in these projects and I think that you have to let them breathe.